and it it's hit so okay it's taking you it's moving you forward you're looking about everything is rushing by you now what's going on where is it taking you <laughs> Almost, but you looked at the camera. Do do Back. Do 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 do. <laughs> Go. Don't ever do that. <laughs> you looked at the camera. I looked above it. Episode 3 The newest entry in the Afterworld series was what I would call the biggest technical and creative challenge of my filmmaking career thus far. From the outset, we've got Zara being stalked underground by the Rex droid. Only for it to emerge from the earth and chase her on foot. Watch the behind the scenes of episode 2 for how I managed to create the earth shattering effects of the droid digging through the earth. For episode 3 though, I wanted the action to continue up the beach, as Zara runs in parallel to the commotion. The rocky valley where the pursuit takes place was created in the same style as the lake, that being Blender's geometry nodes. Various rock assets were distributed on a sculpted mesh surface with varying sizes and orientations. These were further combined with branches to break up the monotony of the terrain and give some visual interest. The set was then dressed with large boulder and cliff assets sourced from Quixel. To spice the sequence up, dirt explosions, tumbling rocks and logs as well as camera shake were added. And the fin's coming for you now, right now, it's coming for you, swim! Excellent. Sam surfaces only to discover the shark has followed him from the depths of the lake. I've always been a fan of this type of split screen shot where the audience gets a glimpse of what's beneath the surface. They've always given me the chills. The water surface here is an upgrade from the water in episode 2 where a bump node was used to create the moving water. Episode 3 saw a much more photorealistic water surface with actual waves bobbing up and down with a glossy surface reflecting the sky and structures around it. This was achieved using an ocean modifier which really prolonged those render times of mine. Lilies bobbing up and down with the waves were given a shrink wrap modifier and thickened using a solidify modifier. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. Turn around, he slipped. Where did he go? Where did he go? <laughs> Just 
With this episode, I tried to take a lot more creative risks, usually without knowing if they were going to work as we were filming them. One such risk was shooting into the sun to get that sweet, sweet backlit cinematic image. And you want to take it, but you're like, where is the shark? Look about you. Right. S- slow, careful moves. And then... Reach! <laughs> <laughs> If you've been following the journey thus far, you'd know that no lighting equipment has been used on this series so far. Outdoor natural light is all that has been used. The weather has always been chosen intentionally. The risk came with the uneven lighting of the green screen and the glare blasting into the camera lens. Not any lower. We started. Each, and then it hit. <laughs> The glare was solved using an umbrella held over the camera, which was actually my niece's idea. And the more difficult green screen shots were rotoscoped as needed, which is never fun. The lesson here was never assume that everything can be fixed in post. These are the directions. (coughs) These are my directions. Yeah, so he's dragging you along. Ready? And it's okay, we don't need the sound effects. I hope this quick behind the scenes was insightful and educational, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, show your support by liking, subscribing, and sharing the channel. Thank you.